You're listening to Tiger Cats at the Half. Hamilton Tiger Cats in comeback mode going into the second half. Down 22 to 6 to the Toronto Argonauts. Bob O'Neill and Andy Fantuz here. This is Tiger Cats at the half, presented by my insurance broker. And Andy, some of the uh, repeating things that we saw in week one, we are seeing again in week two, and are a major reason why the Tiger Cats find themselves down by uh, 22 to 6 mark. Yeah, it's a 16-point game, but it's a, it's a tight matchup out there, and this game is there for them. Uh, I thought in the first half, other than two plays, Bo Levi has been night and day compared to last week. He's been on point. He's 10 out of 14, and two of those incompletions were interceptions, and one of them was a, a throwaway, and one of them was a drop pass. So essentially, he hasn't really missed, but other than those two very careless errors and uh, tried to throw the, the first interception away and just didn't get enough on it. And then the, 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 the second interception, uh, he kind of overlooked James Butler in the flat and threw a ball into double coverage where there was really no chance of Knowski coming up with it. You know, you talk, I, I, I can't help but think of the power of complementary football. You hear that term all the time. And for the Ticats, um, they had the, the end of the first quarter, they had a huge hit by Javion Elliott that was almost a fumble, followed up the first play of the second quarter by a sack by Chris Edwards. What happens? A punt, the offense goes all the way down and scores a touchdown. You go on the other side of the ball, and that nice drive by Bo Levi ends in the interception that, the Argos start at the 30, take it all the way down for a score. That happened again right at the end of that second half. An interception, they go all the way down and score. And then in, in the middle of that, there was the, uh, the, the, the drive where uh, Mason Bennett took the misconduct foul and then Chris Edwards had a rough in the passer foul and they scored on that one. And, um, you know, the Mo, the Mo Diallo uh, roughing the passer when they had the Argos stopped on their own, you know, in the, on, in the scoring zone. Another just, again, it's there for the taking, and uh, it's just the power of that complementary football and those swings, those momentum swings from one or two key plays that have really been the, the difference in this game. Let's run through the scoring in this contest so far. Uh, Tiger Cats give up a single. Uh, Gallimore gives up the single. one nothing. Toronto. Uh, then Toronto go up 8 nothing uh, off a seven-play, 57-yard drive capped off by just a sweet look and run by Chad Kelly. Made a nice move on Davis to get into the end zone. Uh, you know what? And then you talk about those penalties. That touchdown drive was complemented by two rough play misconduct penalties for the Tiger Cats. Again, points off turnover is a factor on that one. Uh, in the second quarter, James Butler uh, cashes in from 10 yards out, missed two-point conversion. Tiger Cats tighten it up at 8-6, to six. Uh, and, and it was a great drive, I thought, Andy, because the O-line on that particular drive was all battered and pieced together. A couple of guys that shouldn't even be in there were in there. And a nice-looking screenplay, 19-yard gain by James Butler out of the hands of Bo Levi Mitchell. But then the Argonauts respond quickly, though, and you go know, 15 to 6 uh, on a quarterback sneak, capping an 11 play, 93 yard drive, uh, which was again complimented and extended by the likes of a face mask by Mo Diallo. And then they get the ball back right at the end of the half there, a five play, 85 yard drive, uh, 59 yard connection from DeMonte, from sorry, Kelly to DeMonte Coxie. And then it's Kelly with the quarterback sneak. So there we are, 14 points off turnovers. As we talked about uh, earlier, the penalties, assisting drives for the Argonauts. And uh, as we saw in the Winnipeg game, kind of the same issues that they have to deal with in the first half. But again, lean on the positives of the second half of that week one loss. And they were in comeback mode. But I do like what you said there about Bo Levi. He looks to be, and I like the play calling is improved and more complimentary, and you're getting Duke Williams involved in the game too. Tim White, a bit of a no-show so far. Yeah, he had that early drop, and he's only had the uh, the one catch, I believe, but um, I, I, I like the game plan. I like the, the execution for the most part by the Cats, other than those two errant throws and the, uh, the, the penalties. Um, these are all issues we kind of touched on pregame. We talked about the O-line, what's going to happen, and you know, sure enough, Colter Woodman's he goes down, and uh, and and then they're they're short. Joel Figueroa had to come out and 
Again, Casey Sales is playing. We talked about that. We, you know, sure tackling. Um, ha they have the Tie Cats have done a really good job of tackling for the most part, but the big back-breaking sort of drive extenders have been off missed tackles. They had Olet in the backfield uh, twice that he extended, one for a first down and one for to be first and goal at the one. And then, uh, and then of course, Kelly, Ja'Garrett Davis had him kind of one-on-one -on -one in open space. And, uh, you know, it's hard to expect a, a defensive lineman to, to um, take down a, you know, a world-class athlete like that at one-on-one. -on -one, but th those are the issues we sort of touched on. And, um, but yeah, going back to your point, though, like g getting the ball spread around for Bo, getting it out of his hands early, getting all the receivers involved, uh, it, it's been it's – been, it's been pleasant to see him. We, you and I were sitting there talking through the first quarter, like, come on, let's see a screen pass, right? Like, that on second down, the Argos are, are coming with the pressures, cover zero or, or just a one or two man blitz. And uh, and then they finally hit it and they ended up scoring on that drive. So um, I like the commitment to the run by by the Cats and I like the spreading the ball around. They just have to really clean up these self-inflicted uh, errors and they would be right in this game and they still are in this game. I think they can come back. If we look at the interceptions that were thrown by Bo Levi, and I know that's going to be the talk through the first half. The one to Turnowski, uh, maybe a bad decision with two guys in there. And then the, the, the first one though, kind of a strange decision though with pressure on him. It, it looked like it was a, a planned scrape and what that means is there was a receiver coming from the far side of the field across behind the, behind the, lineman, uh, behind the line of scrimmage and the Duke Williams was didn't essentially run a route. He was just out five yards downfield blocking. So his back was to the quarterback as Bo Levi was running out, but the scrape was well covered. So in that instance, he needs to throw it at someone's feet, throw it out of bounds, or or, or run the ball. And I, I thought he could have probably extended a little bit more before he made that decision, and maybe somebody would have turned around and been open. Uh, but if he's going to throw it away, if he, that was just inex like he just needs to throw it into the stands. It shouldn't even be close. Well, like you said, 14 points off the turnovers, and that's going to be a big factor to that 22 to six score that's up there. Now, let's moving forward. What do you do to try and get yourself back into this ball game? I I think you keep playing the way you're playing. I think they their their special teams have been playing well. Their defense is being physical. Uh, I, I think I like what Luke said about maybe maybe switching up and playing a little more man-to-man -man because there have been receivers wide open um, for Chad Kelly and, and, tr and trying to get uh, a little bit more pressure. So maybe a bit more aggressive defensively, but offensively, I like I like the pace. I like their their um, uh, the, the different kinds of plays. I like their variety. And I, I think, you know, if they, if they weren't for the turnovers, they'd have... 12, somewhere between 12 to 20 points right now, and it would be um, it would be a respectable first half. What's with this Terry Godwin? With his, his he's like Spider Man at times. Yeah, that looked incredible live that for <laughs> that catch, and uh, it, it, and it was incredible. It just he, as soon as he ran that slant, as soon as he turned, the ball was uh, up and away from him, and he extended. You know, coming into the middle, it's not an easy thing to do when you know there's uh, people coming in there to to sort of take your head off. So great catch and. It um, would be nice to see them target him a bit more and see if he can make a, make an impact. Our, our RJ kind of brought this up during the game, and we are seeing the development of a Keandre Smith is coming up big and making big catches in traffic at key times in the game. Yes, and it goes back. Uh, some good reads by Bo Levi, some nice throws down the middle, both to Keandre and Duke in traffic, and they both have been coming up with big catches. Um, I, I like this. I like this kid a lot, Keandre Smith. He come, plays with fire. He's got he's got decent size and strength, and uh, and just has that grit to him. And, and so, uh, I love seeing him involved. And you know, you got to get Chernowski involved and Godwin a bit more. And then, of course, we got Tim White in our back pocket who we're waiting to see uh, him give a spark. Tiger Cats put up 27 points in that comeback loss to the Blue Bombers. Going to have to see something like that again at BMO Field this evening. You've been listening to Tiger Cats at the half, presented by my insurance broker, uh, Andy Fantuz, and myself will be back at the conclusion of this one. Let's send it right back to RJ and Luke for the broadcast booth on the Tiger Cats Audio Network.